Peace. This is Wise for Wise Words Media. And I just want to address something that's been going on for years. But now it's been amplified more now that the Lakers and LeBron are losing. And that's this hate for Russell Westbrook that exists. You guys were all led in the wrong direction. All of you guys that hate Russell Westbrook, you don't even know why you hate Russell Westbrook. You know how many people I ask why you don't like Russell Westbrook and they can't tell you? They come up with all types of things. Oh, he's a bad teammate. And he's Is he a bad teammate? Who told you he's a bad teammate? Did ex-basketball players tell you Westbrook was a bad teammate? Or did old media tell you that Russell Westbrook was a bad teammate? Can someone find for me where Russell, where anybody said Russell Westbrook was a bad teammate? Or they left the team because of Russell Westbrook? doesn't exist. In fact, on the contrary, what you do find is guys like Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant, everybody try to push this old this narrative that, oh, KD left because of Russell Westbrook. Russ, Kevin Durant, out of his own mouth, or, you know, out of his own Twitter account, the now famous Burner account, Kevin Durant, in that account, goes on to say I did not the only thing that was good in OKC was Russell Westbrook outside of that the team was terrible the coaching was terrible there was no, no reason to stay there outside of playing with Russell Westbrook K, that's KD Paul George when Paul George decides to go back home he always wanted to play in LA when he decides to, to go back home to L.A. and play with the Clippers, old media again try to make it a thing about Westbrook. And Paul George cuts them off immediately and says, no, don't do that. Russell Westbrook, this has nothing to do with Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is a tremendous teammate. I enjoyed my time with Russell Westbrook, and this is all about me going back home. Victor Oladipo. Victor Oladipo mention Victor Oladipo comes to OKC the year that Kevin Durant left Victor Oladipo was supposed to be a top-notch basketball player I think he if I'm not mistaken he went number two overall in the draft he was a really good college player in Indianapolis so Victor Oladipo comes to the OK, Oklahoma City Thunder and he's observing Russell Westbrook's work ethic and he said I think it was on the barbershop show with LeBron James he was like yo I watched Russell Westbrook play uh, and train and practice the way he attacked practice the way he attacked training made me feel like I was slacking and I wasn't making the most out of my career he said that offseason, Russell Westbrook inspired him to, to switch up his diet, to get a trainer, to work on his game. And what ends up happening the next year, Victor Oladipo makes his first All-Star game. All off the leadership and team camaraderie of Russell Westbrook. See, old media don't like Russell Westbrook because Russell Westbrook been on old media's case he been exposing them dudes he knows that old media their whole thing is just to dig at a person it old media is halfway there for sport but they're halfway there to try to divide to try to get into players heads and you know destroy certain elements of a team that's there already for instance when it came to Steven Adams, right? One time, Westbrook and Steven Adams are sitting down in a, pre in a press conference after a game. They were playing the Houston Rockets, excuse me, the Houston Rockets in the playoffs. The guy in the media asks, he asked Steven Adams, why is it that when Russell Westbrook 
leaves the court, you guys lose the lead, you guys start to play bad, and you've been on the court for a couple of those meltdowns, Westbrook cut Steven Adams off. I was like, nah, let me answer this. He said, yo, don't, don't do that. Don't talk about my team, separate me from my team, we're one team. Don't say, oh, just because Steven was on the floor and, and Westbrook leaves. It's not about that. This is a team. If you're going to do, if you're going to criticize somebody, you got to criticize us all. You criticize me, included with the team, because we one unit. You don't divide. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to divide us, and that ain't going to work, man. We win as a team. We lose as a team. The media member gets upset, and he starts going at Westbrook. Or he, he's like, no, no, I'm not going to give up the microphone. I asked the question, and I want the answer. And, and he's going at, and Westbrook's like, next question, next question. Because Westbrook don't play ball with the media. So the media don't play ball with him. And it's simple like that. And that's why they create these false narratives that teams don't like to play with him. Uh, teammates don't like to play with him, and people leave because of him. They create false that my the one that that is a pet peeve and, and makes my skin crawl is the other the other narrative they created. They created they coined this term stat pattern. What the f is a stat pattern? What is that? Stat pattern. When in the world I've been watching sports for for almost, for almost 30 years now. Never heard the term stat pattern ever in my life. Jason Kidd approached the game the same way. Jason Kidd was averaging triple doubles. He didn't finish the season averaging a triple double, but he was going throughout the whole season getting triple doubles. When did they ever call Jason Kidd a stat pattern? When? Uh, Oscar Robertson, the first person to ever average a triple double for a season. When they have, whenever they bought him up, they don't say, "Oh, the great stat pattern, Oscar Robertson." No, it was a term they used, they coined, to bring down Russell Westbrook to attack Russell Westbrook. And it's funny because I was watching a show the other day, a very popular show, a, a sports debate show, and. The per one of the people there, the moderator goes, so the Lakers are entering this season and LeBron chasing uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's uh, all-time scoring record. So now it's all about stats now. So isn't he a stat pattern now? Now y'all want to change the narrative? Oh, LeBron, because you know that this Lakers team is atrocious. So now y'all want to change the narrative, and it's all about LeBron not chasing a championship, but LeBron chasing uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's scoring title. So now y'all switch the narrative, but y'all don't call him a stat pattern because he's out to score points this year and next year, whatever, in order to surpass Kareem. Y'all don't call him a stat pattern, though. But when Russ, who doesn't have anybody to rebound besides Steven Adams down there, Russ, who doesn't have anybody to, to dish out the ball, to give assists. So, yes, in order to help his team win, since the only guy they have is Steven Adams in the paint, of course Russell Westbrook is going to do. If he feels he has the ability to help his team win by grabbing rebounds, of course he's going to attack the paint and grab rebounds, just like Jason Kidd used to do. Of course he's going to distribute the ball, lead the league in assist multiple times. Yes, he's going to score 20-plus points a game because he, OKC did wrong by him all those years by never surrounding him with shooters. They gave this guy Andre Robeson as his shooting guard. How are you going to have a shooting guard that can't shoot? What team does that? They never gave him, outside of Paul George, they never gave him weapons. You know, offensive weapons. 
The whole offense was just him and Paul George. So they come with this stat pad and stuff. It's all tactics that they use, be it he's a bad teammate, nobody wants to play with him, or he's a stat powder. They use these things against Russ because they don't like Russ. So now the new one is the Lakers are losing because Russell Westbrook. No, they're not losing because Russell Westbrook. The main reason they're losing is because Anthony Davis is a shell of himself. For one, he can never stay healthy. Two, he's begging to be a power forward because he's big and frail. So they have him playing power, uh, center because they have no center. They should have kept Dwight Howard or, or you know, uh, DeAndre Jordan or somebody. But now you got him playing guys like uh, Jokic and Embiid. And these guys are bodying him. So Nurkic the other day bodied him. So he's trying to stretch his game out, shooting from outside. He's shooting 20% from the three-point line. Like, y'all not talking about that because old media is conditioning you guys to blame Russell Westbrook for everything. Russell Westbrook is not the GM. Russell Westbrook is not the guy, you know, that's Rob Palenka and LeBron James' job to surround LeBron James with shooters. It's not Russell Westbrook's fault that these dudes took a nap throughout the whole offseason and their biggest move that they did was bring in Pat Beverly. How is that your biggest splash, Pat Beverly? And then you don't re-sign guys like Horton Tucker, who shoots the, the, the three-point at a decent clip. You don't bring back Carmelo Anthony, who can knock down an open jump shot. You don't bring back guys like uh, Malik Monk, who can shoot from outside. You don't bring none of these guys back. And you fill that roster up with a bunch of G-leaguers, and then this is 0-3 is exactly what you're gonna get. When you got a guy like LeBron James who penetrates, his whole success has been based on dribble penetration, kick out to a guard that can shoot the three-pointer. He doesn't have that. That's not Russell Westbrook's game. So if you're gonna sign Westbrook, you have to have snipers around that. They never did. They didn't sign that. They didn't go after shooters. So there you have it. You're going to have an 0-3 season. Probably 0-4 tonight because they're going to play Denver. But that is the reason why they're pushing this narrative once again about Russell Westbrook. All you keep hearing is Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook. They don't talk about the great teammate that he is. The fact that when Mike Brown got hired to be coach... Oh, excuse me, not Mike Brown, pardon himself. Um, Darvin Ham. When Darvin Ham got hired to be coach, Westbrook was already in trade rumors. That didn't deter Westbrook from going to the press conference, welcoming his new coach. Pat Beverly. The media went crazy. Social media, memes everywhere about these two fighting. Who was the only Laker that showed up? The only big name Laker that showed up to Pat Beverly's press conference? Yes, none other than Russell Westbrook. That they don't talk about. They don't talk about how Russell Westbrook was still averaging almost 20 points a game, nine rebounds a game, or, or eight rebounds a game and like eight assists. You put those numbers, those numbers are successful numbers for any point guard. But it's just the fit. That's not the right fit for him and LeBron. Them together is not the right fit. So I just want to address that, man. You know, people like to attack Russell Westbrook because the media trained them to do that. The media doesn't like Westbrook because Westbrook don't mess with the media. And because of that, they created this narrative a lot of y'all fell for it. Y'all don't even know why y'all don't like Russ. Y'all use terms like stat, stat powder and people don't, you know, people don't want to play with him. 
when none of the above is true. Now, one former player said they didn't like playing with Westbrook. And this stat padding thing, y'all ain't calling LeBron a stat padder when he's out to score points. That's all he was doing last year. He ain't even care about the, the playoffs no more. He knew that team was bad. So all he was doing was just scoring, scoring. His whole focus was scoring, chasing Kareem last year. But y'all ain't calling him a stat padder last year. Y'all ain't calling him that this year. So, yeah, man, I'm Wise for Wise Words Media. Peace.